All right, he's coming in high energy already. He's coming. Why, 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 why are you so high energy? I would think that you'd be despondent because your Knicks, uh, your Knicks, <laughs> get out of here. Your Knicks lost to the Heat. They can't, no, wait a so? minute. Wait a minute, Mero. <laughs> don't matter. It don't matter. We still turned up. <laughs> okay, uh, no, I, Mero, you can't. I don't understand what's happening here. I would think you'd be quieter after the Knicks come into town and no. and, and Jalen Brunson. Uh, looks inefficient and Miami size looks like it's a problem for you. Uh, you, but you don't back down. You don't think that that's indicative no, of anything. It is not indicative of anything, Dan. We've seen the Knicks throughout the season. We see, you know, you win, you can't win 82 games in a season. That's first of all. Second of all, the Yankee, uh, the Yankees, pardon me, the Knicks rather have taken a Yankees approach where it's not about the regular season anymore. Nobody cares about seeding. We're ready for anybody. We're ready for the Celtics. Whatever you put in front of us, it does not matter. You are okay? not an so a simple loss to 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 Jimmy and them. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't matter, bro. I would say matter. I would say it was a good loss. The Knicks were playing without some of their best players. They were still in the Thank game very still. late in the game. Brunson having a bad game. They were still in the game on the road against the Heat. That is a good loss right. for the Knicks. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. They, listen, there's no such thing. As moral victories, like Jay Z said, but this is a moral victory. This is like, yo, we can hang with any team in the East with one of our guys, and he's hobbled. Okay, OG's nowhere to be found. We're saving him for the playoffs. We're gonna keep him on ice for the still playoffs. I know that's. I know I'm not official medical staff, but I am unofficial medical staff, and right. I can tell you in my heart that's what's happening. Okay, just thank you. Him on ice I, we need him for the I, I'm bothered by something here, and I think the shipping container was bothered by the same a thing. A thank-off here. Yeah, you guys just thanking each other because <laughs> you guys are the chemistry kings. You know how to make every environment work. Why are you Good saying? On, why are you saying thank you to each other uh, <laughs> over things that don't? Stu th is a very listen. You can't spell astute without stew. <laughs> thank you. Okay. Oh, oh and that shit. guy knows what he's talking about. <laughs> stew knows both. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know Come on, what? God, Dana. Okay, I just got checkmated. <laughs> What's I, a stoop mean? I can't. I cannot spell a stoop without Stu right in the middle of everything. Let me uh, play. Let me play Thibodeau at the end of the other night. Now you know my father calls him uh, the butcher because he looks like somebody in another career who would look like a butcher. You can imagine him doing this in an apron with some blood on it. But this is very ra for very rare for him. For he's a like. This guy doesn't get into controversies. And at the end of this game, he's saying, no, Jalen Brunson, come on, let's referee him differently than we are. It's that Hello? simple. He's getting fouled. 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 <laughs> he's getting fouled. That's about as controversial as, as anything he's, he's ever said, lying. isn't it? Like, he doesn't say controversial things. He does not say controversial things. He's a very keep your head down, don't complain about the calls. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to bark like an elephant seal when I'm upset. You know what I'm saying? But he's right. He's right. Jalen Brunson, listen, I know we talked about this last time I was on. And, uh, and yo, you got a show with Carmelo. So you're like, yo, you're going to act like you're going to act like you're not excited about Jalen Brunson versus Melo. That, that, the connection here is this. Carmelo Anthony also never got those superstar whistles, even though he was a superstar. He did not get those calls. Jalen Brunson? We saw it last year in the playoffs against your Miami Heat. They had to go review him getting MMA elbowed in the face by Gabe Vincent, who is no longer a member of the Heat. They had to go review that. I don't know man. what you just did there. What just happened? There? Reminding what, you. I know, but he, he held the side Thank of you. his nose and talked into his hand. What were you? Was that a secret you were telling just, somebody? I'm just letting you because know that Gabe Vincent is no longer on right. Heat. Heat fans right. don't actually watch the Heat games. Mm -hmm. In case you didn't know. Right. No, oh, you know. Oh, is that right, what you just in case. Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah. That's just in case you didn't know. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't know. The roster, there's a lot of roster turnover. A lot of people <laughs> that you don't know who they are. A lot of people who, when you play NBA 2K, there's no like, picture of like them. Highsmith, a, like Highsmith. Like Highsmith. You hated Highsmith. Hey, with Locksmith. You, uh, uh, <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. Jalen Brunson had no shot against him. Uh, he went one for four against him. An 0 for 4 against Bam. Locks, an 0 for 3 against Jimmy. Locksmith. Getting fouled out of here. <laughs> Not Highsmith. Come on. Stop it, bro. He's They're beating Jalen Brunson down, bro. He's Look, it's the same thing. Look, I always make the Yankees and the, and the Knicks comparisons. It's like Aaron Judge's strike zone. It's like, yo, the man has been in the league for like a decade, and you still don't know he's tall? You know what I mean? It's the same thing with JB, bro. He's six feet tall, dog. He's getting abused when he goes in the paint, but he's finishing strong because 
he is that guy. Jalen Brunson saying? is fourth in the league amongst point guards in free throws mm. attempted. So he's should be first, calls. but he should be first. Over Luca, should, Shea, exactly, Stu. There Thank you go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> like, hello? Soulmates? Uh, it's soulmates. Man. You you have found Come on, yeah, you, Stu Romero going on tour next summer. This summer. <laughs> yeah, get ready. Okay, because <laughs> the well, thank you tour. You guys better yet. <laughs> we just thank each other. <laughs> thank you. What's our jacket tour? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna crush it. I mean, <laughs> 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 okay. <laughs> Two languages. The thank you tour, and you just wander around the earth telling people thank you for what? <laughs> for thank you. Doesn't for matter. Because <laughs> I'm I mean, smart. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. This is. The, uh, I, I will warn both of you that you. Uh, but that that the the Heat. The Knicks, they better win the championship this year because Wembenyama is going to win all the future ones. Like, <laughs> like, like you, 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 we have a year left. Like you got one year. Like everybody better yell and get, get your arguments in now because what's <laughs> happening over there, that's the worst form of it we're ever going to see. And it's like, oh, my God. Dan, why do you think I'm so passionate now? Why do you think I came on the air Playing them bowl at maximum volume. I'm extremely excited and I'm extremely, I'm willing the Knicks to a championship. Because, like you said, after this year, it's over. It's Wembenyama <laughs> season. You, bet, forever, you, so. be, you better win it before Wembenyama gets to the playoffs because he's going to keep <laughs> growing and he's a bit of a spider and and nobody if understands to what to do room, with that. Yeah. Yeah. If he gets to the weight room and the playoffs, it's over. Cancel the NBA. Okay. Let's call it the Wimbayama League. <laughs> yeah. Uh, did That's you it. see? Did you see what he did to Jokic? Jokic comes out and he said, I, you know, he blocked my first shot. And I'm like, you do that again, and I'm gonna. And then he did it four more times. And I'm like, <laughs> and then he did it 28 more times. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I'm, I'm like I, I my mind still can't comprehend Jokic, and now you're gonna tell me it's something. There's something extraterrestrial that now confuses him. Listen. The moment I saw, like I said it last time, the moment I saw him on that breakaway dunk against the Celtics where he blocked the shot on one end, just basically pulled it out the air, ran like a baby giraffe on steroids all the way down the court and just yet, like, I don't even, I don't, can you call it a dunk when you don't jump? You know what I'm saying? Like when you just float to the rim and place the ball inside the hoop, like no, no, that's what he's doing and yeah. nobody can stop it. Uh, by the way, Jokic had 42 and 16 that night and won the game. I mean, Un understood. Yes. Thank you. Yes, Jokic is still out in front for now. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you, Stu. Really? The thank you tour. Might drop, <laughs> might drop 62 against the Celtics, bro. And Burns still took the W, so you know what I mean? This is what counts at the end. You know what I'm saying? The dub. That's all that matters. Uh, I will tell the people again because uh, Carmelo and the kid Mero are doing something that's got a lot of chemistry in it, and he's bringing out the best Mello, 7 p.m. in Brooklyn. There's a reason that Mello chose. Look, all of these guys who have Mello's power now can make the choices they want in this economy in the podcast game, and there's a reason that he chose this guy to team up with on what it is they're doing. So I urge you to support 7 p.m. in Brooklyn as he continues to try out to be uh, our Knicks correspondent. Have you gotten any feedback on your performances the other times you've been on? Are you, do you, do you feel hey, like- Hey, everybody, uh, everybody agrees there. It's, it's mine for the taking, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? I feel like Eli Manning in the draft, yo. Like, I, I pick where I want to go, you know what I'm saying? So <laughs> if you want me, let it be known, you know what I'm saying? I know Stu wants me in the building. Yeah. If everybody else wants me in the building, I know Jess wants me in the building, shot the lead. If everybody wants me in the building, anybody else wants me in the building, let me know. I'm here. I, you know I want. The I job is mine. But uh, while well, Sam Morrell is somebody I want in the building, but his uh, his sardonic darkness, he his fandom is really rooted in childhood. Really rooted. I don't know if yours is. I believe yours is it rooted is. in adult business. No, no, your fandom. Yes, no, no, of, co no, of course. No, no, no. Dan, no, I don't want to cut you off, Dan. This is your show. But let me, let me, let me get, let me speak. I, I claim my time. I have been a Knicks fan. Since the moment I exited my mom's uterus at mm. St. Luke's Hospital in Harlem. You understand me? I have been a Knicks fan since my Uncle Gabe used to take me out to the to, ooh, to the got to the playground and teach me the triple threat with Rex Bex on, because he played for Stony Brook when they were like D3. You know what I'm saying? El I Dio. have been a Theo. You know what I'm saying? Shot the Theo Gabe. You know what I'm saying? Like he out here taught me hoops, taught me the game, and made me a Knicks fan since the days of Pat. And Mace and John and X Men and all those guys. I remember being in the fifth grade when the Rangers won the Stanley Cup, and 
They crossed, it said 1940, because they hadn't won till, since 1940. They crossed out the one, they crossed out the zero. They had the 94 in the middle. They said, this is the Knicks year. It wasn't. But I've been a Knicks fan since before then. It's just been enhanced by my relationship with Melo. Bona fides. Thank you. How do you feel about Pat Riley you, then? Stu. How you do you it. feel about Pat Riley? I didn't know it He's was. He's a rat. Pat the rat. Boom. He left. He's a rat. Thanks. Get him out of here. I Listen, there's, there's a little bit of love. Right, because you can't have hate without love. Right, it's 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 the they're the polar opposites of emotion. Right, so at one point I loved Pat Riley. I thought he was a genius, and then he turned out to be a fraudulent, backstabbing rat who is now doing what a lot of washed up New Yorkers do and moving to Florida to live out their last days in the sun. Wait, I did that. Thank you. No, but and to spend. No, and, <laughs> I'm, I'm probably doing too. If I don't make enough money to buy half a DR, I'll see you down there in a couple of years. But and in that time, though, buried buried twenty different versions of the Knicks. Like that's part of it. You're heartbroken still, right? You, yes. you, you. It 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 hurts to have someone to know that you had the basketball god. He could have done it for you. And you have never forgiven him and will never forgive him because he came and did it in Miami. I, listen, listen. I, first of all, I thought you were talking about Michael Jordan for a second. No. Okay? He didn't do it in Miami, fam. He went to Miami and maybe, I, listen, I don't know. Maybe. Okay, listen. All I know is that I think I saw his name in, in, the, in those Diddy files, all right? So that's all I'll say. No, oh, no. No, no, you can't do that. No, that's ridiculous. No, no, this is this is totally reckless. You can't do that. No, you can't do that. That's unacceptable. No, I will not allow that. I, look, we've got to have some. There was a rain in L.A. and it was no, a rain no, in no, Miami, no, 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 no. Look, there was no rain in New you don't, York. You don't have any journalistic standards. You are not some. You are just making. I do, you, you. I have, work for. No, no. I work for the Associated Press. Pete. I want to get your expertise on a couple of things here because when we came in here today, Stu Gatz is claiming that he knows what a lottery-winning gas station or bodega looks like, <laughs> that he has it in oh. his mind and he knows where to buy the winning tickets. And he thought that you would be good on this subject. He thought that you... 100%. <laughs> Thank you. You, you, <laughs> and, you and Stugatz are kindred hey, spirits. Come on. DD sent me to the store many, many times to get two loose Marlboros and the lotto numbers. A couple of Lucy's. A couple of Lucy's and the lotto. Wait, 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 wait. Okay. Dan, this is my guy, man. Right there. Right there? Yes. Shipping container. Yes. Take a good look at that deli and grocery, a.k.a. what they got. That one right there will win you a gazillion dollars a Powerball. You know why? Because you can't even see through the front. Yep. You can't see through the glass. If you can't see through the glass at all, it's covered in pictures of sandwiches and cigarettes and Arizona iced tea cans, you're going to win. You're going to win there. If two it's cranes. too clean and they got organic snacks, you're not going to win there, bro. You're not gonna. You know what? You know what you do in there. You win the scratch offs there. That's yeah. how you win the scratch offs. Huh. So you wait, the scratch offs. Wait, 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 wait. Are you are you alleging that in the place in the in the gas station where they sell the sushi? No, nope, you're not gonna win anything big there. That is not no, what. No, no. That's, you can't win it there. No, you're, Never you're gonna happening. Max out at twenty dollars right. on a scratch off. They will put it in a place of bigger desperation. It has to look a little. Yes. It, it 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 has to look a little. We're covering our windows for a reason. We don't want you to see it. It needs to be a front. Like, that needs to be a front yes. for something else. Yeah. That's where exactly. you know it's good. For K2. I want to bring, <laughs> bring Tony in here, Stugatz, <laughs> because I am told we have a refrain del dia to play again. And this uh, this was very popular last Bravo. time, uh, the last time that we did it. So uh, he's ready to do it. Let's go, Tony. Vamos a El Tigrazo, el único, the Kid Mero. El Tigrón. El Tigrón. El más duro de todos los duros, el papi de todas las ladies. Exactly right. right. El, lunes, domingo. el príncipe, el rey, Gracias. el amor, el corazón, de todo. Tu cielo, tu rey. <laughs> Muchas gracias, too. We're coming very soon. <laughs> Latin poppy. The swaggering Latin poppy. <laughs> We have the wheel. Let's get to it. Let's get to it. Oh, 
Oh, Mero, can you explain to the people what se rayó el disco means? Se rayó el disco. Se rayó el disco. That is also an equivalent say uh, to my, what my mom says, pusiste la nota discordante. You know what I'm saying? That's the, that's the uh, part of the conversation, yo, where you like, yo, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yo, your cousin is very, she's beautiful. She won a, a you know, Miss Hialeah last year. She's very pretty. Da -da 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 -da. And then your other cousin goes, yeah, she's mad. Yo, we kissed in the fifth grade. And you're like, All right, yes. That is the record. <laughs> is... <laughs> what do you say, my friend? <laughs> it is. That is. It. It's the record is scratched in the middle of a conversation. <laughs> Hold on. No, but this is happening throughout the Latin community. The record is scratching throughout our community right now. We also use it in a way of like in a stutter where you're like, I Draft crings. Oh, se rayó el disco. Algo se pasó ahí. No. I want to uh, ask you. I don't know. Uh, excuse me. I've got a five dollar fine here. I think because I can't get that I got out. It. Yeah. yeah. Straight to Jess. Uh, yes. Je the money. The money does go I straight need some to Jess. Money. Dan's been out for a while. Jess, baby. <laughs> Just, uh, just getting a gel X this weekend, baby. You know what I'm saying? Y'all just yes, paying for that. Thank you. I uh, need one. Are, are Look you? At the, are you this. I, I want you as an NBA aficionado to tell me where Malachi Flynn scoring 50 in an NBA basketball game for the Pistons off the bench, where it is that it ranks in terms of most amazing things you have ever seen to devalue the 50-point game. <laughs> Hey, look, I once uh, I once watched, I believe it was Alonzo G drop 45 at the Garden. So, hey, look, if and look, if we're in the era of like everybody's dropping 70, you know what I mean? Like to to we were talking about 7 p.m. in Brooklyn, a, a wonderful show, which I go is alongside of Carmelo Anthony. And we're talking about how it used to be averaging 25 points was like, yo, whoa, he's averaging 25. Now Malachi Flynn is averaging 25. No, he's not. He's you averaging no. He's averaging five, and he's inflating it to twenty-five by putting in the occasional fifty off the bench. <laughs> fifty burger in there out of nowhere. The fifth. Listen, these games they don't mean anything. Nothing means anything anymore, Dan, because there's always a stat for something. Every day somebody breaks a record. Malachi Flynn was the only player under twenty-five to score fifty points off the bench in Detroit on a Wednesday night <laughs> in April. You know what I'm saying? Like, and that, that that's on stat news right now all over your Twitter. Your Twitter feed. <laughs> Meryl, no que lo saben, no saben la gente, es que Malachi es dominicano, es primo tuyo, Malachi Smith. Malachi, Malachi, Malachi ese Malachi, este, ese tigre, eh, well, uh, let me tell you something about Malachi. Malachi tenía un colmado allá en Santiago, <laughs> and they realized that he had a jump shot, so they were like, loco, deja de estar vendiendo queso y maní, y vete a jugar vete para allá. Hoy. Vete para allá, para pa, pa Detroit, para Michigan. ¿Para dónde? <laughs> where is that? No Caribbean person knows where Detroit Dominican is. Dominican people you know Puerto where. Puerto Rico, Cuba, Dominican Republic, Haiti, every. They don't know. They're like, yo, what is Michigan? <laughs> uh, Merrill, we will talk to you, buddy. Thank you for being on with us. I will tell the people again. Uh, he's got a new ish show with Carmelo at 7 p.m. in Brooklyn. Uh, you can check out That's new right? episodes every Thursday on YouTube and wherever it is that you get your podcast. I've talked a lot for you on what it is that this is, but, you know, why don't you tell us why it is that this is the project you've chosen to attach yourself to? Because you've gotten some tastes of some pretty good entertainment options, and this is the one that you've decided to dedicate your time to. Yeah, man. Like you said, I'm an NBA aficionado. You know, I enjoy the game. I love talking I love just having those conversations. That's why I love coming on here. You know what I mean? Because it's, it's just the vibe. We have a conversation. There's no like, hey, let's talk about this. Now switch to this. Now switch to this. Now switch to this. There's structure, but it's loose. You know what I mean? And that's where I feel like I thrive. It's just like an open gym. You know what I mean? That's it's 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 a it's a showbiz open gym. Melo's there. I'm there. We're just hanging out, and it's a good time. And it's not just basketball. Like if you want to talk about pin downs and and roll screen this that, you might get a little bit of that. Uh, but JJ and LeBron are doing it and drinking wine while they're doing it. But for 7 p.m. in Brooklyn, come have fun. You know what I'm saying? It's a late night show that happens to be hosted by your boy and Carmelo Anthony. You know what I'm saying? So it's hoops. It's culture. It's fun. It's laughs. If you watch an episode and you don't laugh once or hear a story 
that makes you be like, oh, wow. Then you could write me and I will cash happy five dollars. And if Thank I you. if if I may on uh, on, on his behalf, uh, as you guys continue to thank each other, I will just tell the people who might not know the history uh, because uh, you and Jesus, an uncomic, uh, an uncommonly comical chemistry duo. Uh, oh, go you, look it up. You were gonna you were gonna have your run of late night options, and uh, you did, and then things changed aggressively in the industry. And now you're making choices on behalf of your career that are smart to partner up with the people who are aligned with how you think about what individual brands should be in the next 10 years of whatever you do with your career, right? I don't mean to speak no, for you, but I've I've been impressed by it watching it from here because you've gracefully made your way into a second career. It's hard to do when you've always been a part of a duo. That's right, Dan. And you know ball and you know entertainment. You know what I'm saying? So you uh, obviously know strategy as well coming from, you know what it is. You know how what it is to leave like a big machine where everything's cozy and they send you a car to pick you up to go in and do an indie. You know what I mean? And then having to look at spreadsheets for the first time in your life. So you know, as well as anybody, the freedom and the joy that comes with hanging out with your, with your peoples. You know what I mean? It's a little extra work. You know what I mean? You got to crush some numbers and do some things. But at the end of the day, the freedom that it affords you to create unencumbered is priceless, bro. So thank you. You know what I mean? Shout yeah. out to everybody that tunes in at 7 p.m. in Brooklyn. Shout out to everybody that tunes in to Victory Light, the more unhinged version of your boy. And, you know what I'm saying, we here, baby, we ain't going nowhere. I might have a third career, Dan. I might be an opera singer. You know what I'm saying? I saw Andrea Bocelli the other day, you know what I'm saying, getting a sandwich. And I was like, yo, what's up? Let's get into this opera show. <laughs> Thank he was you. Like, Let's yeah. go. Yeah. Why, why, I'm thinking thank me you, and you on tour, too, I right? Correct? We're not losing that I dream. Got, right? Listen, yes. I've heard me and you also. Yes. Too. Thank you, my brother. Okay, thank you. Appreciate you. Yep. Uh, thank you, Mero. It's good, uh, good seeing you. And I will urge the people again, 7 p.m. in Brooklyn, because you're you're also supporting someone who is trying to do something that is difficult in self-employment because he has learned through the Hollywood hard way. Oh, it might be really cool to just own all of my own. Shit. I think that would be fun <laughs> not to have to share my freedom with anybody. That's crazy. That, what a concept, Dan. Yo. The brand comes straight to you and gives you the money instead of giving the network the money, and then the network gives you like a salary. Wow, wow! Who would have thunk? Thank you, thank you. <laughs> You're coming on tour with us. Thank huh? you. Yes, yeah, I'll, yeah, go, cool. I'll, I'll go on the Let's thank go, you baby. tour. Let's go on the thank you tour together. <laughs> really, we get to do it this way. This is funny. All right, muchas thank gracias. You. Yes, muchas, muchas.